everybody, what's going on? I'm Frozen with Outdoor Adventures, and man, thank you so much for joining me. So, taking a first look at a brand new pack, brand new company too. This is the Evolved Supply Company, the Ranger. If you guys remember Darwin on the trail, right? I'm assuming if you've heard of me, you have probably also have heard of him. He's a, a triple crowner, did the AT, the PCT, the CDT, several other hundreds of miles of hikes. Uh, Darwin did reach out to me. Uh, I've worked with Darwin in the past for a hammock verse tent video. I've also been on several of his uh, live Q and A podcast things. And uh, you know, I'm happy to work with him because he's just real easy to talk to. Um, he's a good dude. Uh, and I know that if I have a problem or I absolutely hate this pack, he's not going to take any offense. More than likely, he'd put my suggestions and feedback into the next version of this thing. Stitching's great. Can't complain about really anything as far as quality goes. The material is made out of recycled material, like recycled water bottles, for goodness sakes. It's called a EcoPack EPXL 200. It feels very similar to the Ultra 200, maybe a bit smoother. It's laminated on the inside, hence why I think it's the EPXL for lamination. Could be wrong about that. Making it, you know, almost waterproof. Very, very water resistant, we'll call it. Uh, side pockets, they accommodate two smart water bottles like you've come to expect. And these are made up of a non-laminated uh, EcoPack EPX200. So again, the L I think means lamination. Now, one of the problems I have with the water bottle pockets right off the bat, I'm not sure if this is actually gonna be a real issue or not, but most packs have a drain hole. Now this pack does have a drain hole, but it's really, really small, at least on my model. Uh, I would actually recommend to make that a little bit bigger just in case you're caught in a monsoon and you're getting some pulling, which I know is probably so rare, but you know, why take the chance? So that's problem number one. I'm gonna see with the pack. And again, this is just a first looks video. I haven't even tried this first trip out. Uh, There's gonna be a day hike with this tomorrow and I'll know a little bit more just about how it feels before I take it on a real weekend trip. Hey everybody, it's Frozen from the Future. I just got back from that day hike that I was talking about earlier and I was having a, a really big problem getting the water bottles out of the side pockets, right and left. I just, I can't get them out. So my solution for that was to lower my straps down, grab the water bottle out and, you know, take a drink, put it back in. I'm not sure if this issue exists on the medium or large frames of the pack, but uh, I definitely messaged Darwin when I got back and letting him know he's taking the feedback into consideration. But he also said that some other people said it was one of the easiest systems to get water bottle pockets out of. So it may just be me. Just wanted to make you aware of it. That will come up in the full review later on down the line. Anyway, back to the video. Moving up from the water bottle pockets, we do have compression straps on here. They're just like I'm not even sure what material this is. It's not gonna work good for compression per se, but what it will work good for is kind of tightening up your ice axe or perhaps you know stowing your trekking pole, something like that. Uh, speaking of ice axe, there is a stowable ice axe loop at the bottom of the pack. If you don't wanna use it or don't want it hanging out, I should say, you can just kind of tuck it in this mesh pocket down here, which we'll get to in just a second. Uh, actually, speaking of the mesh pockets, the material on the back mesh and the bottom mesh pocket, now they're calling this Venom UL stretch mesh. To me, this feels a lot like ultra stretch mesh, but I could be wrong about it. Maybe it's a form of a recycled ultra mesh, uh, but it has the same behavior and feel and kind of stretchiness. So uh, in the last video, I said that, you know, I kind of prefer Lycra spandex, uh, because I, I tend to shove a ton of stuff in here. I put my tarp in here uh, when I'm bringing a hammock, if I'm bringing a tent, the whole tent goes in here, especially if it's wet. I put my rain jacket in here, just a whole plethora of things. It makes me look like a Ninja Turtle out there. And this stuff just, it's stretchy, but it's not as stretchy as the Lycra mesh. I have gotten holes in my spandex Lycra stuff. If this is more durable than that material, then I'm all for it, a little less, uh, usability versus more, much more durability. So I will stick with that. Bottom pocket is everything you'd expect. You have one large opening on the front. You have the stowable ice axe loop, like I said, and then you have another trash port on the user side towards your back. Now, my thoughts on the bottom 
pockets is I'm not a huge fan of people putting wrappers, garbage, uh, food for the day in here because my thoughts are, man, that's that odor is gonna transfer to this material and rodents are gonna get in there and chew through it possibly while you're sleeping you know, at night. And if they don't like what they see, there's a potential that they could you know, drill through the bottom of the pack with their teeth. And that's been a, a big thing for me. I only put, when I have the bottom mesh pockets, I only put like gloves or a hat or, you know, a map. And even still, you know, if it's wet outside, you're putting that pack down on that wetness and all that's being absorbed into whatever you're bringing. So I, I tend to not like my packs with the bottom mesh pocket. I gave it a good old try. Don't really like it that much, but you know, there's some people out there that absolutely love it. Um, the, it's important to note that the attention to detail on this pack is pretty good. For instance, they like where you pinch and grip the mesh in the back, it's, it's extra reinforced. There's a stitch, there's a reinforcement stitch right where you would grab that just in case it kind of unfurls, which I've had happen in the past uh, to like my Osprey packs when I use the Atmos actually and the, uh, the Exos, both of them did the same thing. So I like seeing that little extra uh, attention to detail to kind of firm that up. Moving on to the modularity part of this pack. And I think that's where the pack starts really shining. So this pack comes in two different models. We have the base model kind of stripped down for $250. And then we have like the complete blown out version for uh, 330. And that complete version has like a Y strap, uh, the padded hip belt, uh, two shoulder pockets, and it comes with a Nylo Flume pack liner. So pretty good for the price, it's very competitive. Um, for like the base model, that's really competes well with the Z-Pax Nero priced at 249 for those interested. So again, back to the modularity like I was talking about before I got sidetracked, sorry. They have this G-hook on here. So right now there's a V-strap, a G-hook, and then it, you know, it's a compression strap to kind of tighten the pack up at the top, just like all the other packs have. This G hook's really easy to get in and out and kind of attach it back. And what I like about this is say you're not carrying a bear can or you don't have a long water carrier, you're not using like an Evanue or a knock bag, you can actually take this V strap off with these little metal like clips on the webbing adjuster. And I've never seen this before. And I don't know if this is on any other pack. If the, the Evolve supply company thought of that, that's amazing because that, that's a really cool feature that I like to see more packs have. So after you take the V strap off, you have this piece of webbing back here that's sewn on that you can then attach the G hook and there's your single point of adjustment instead of having the V strap. Want to put it back on? It's real simple to get back on. You can do it in about 10 seconds. And I really, really like that. Moving down from the load lifters, we have the shoulder strap pockets. Now I get these on all my packs just because I use them so much. Uh, these shoulder strap pockets, they gobble up my phone. They're, they're really well designed. I, I think they're great. Um, in fact, I could put a lot more than just my phone in here and then say I'm leaning over, right? You, there's actually a snap behind the shoulder strap pocket you can make sure nothing falls out of that way you don't lose your map your phone your your gps whatever you're using these shoulder strap pockets for it will stay in these pockets now unfortunately they aren't adjustable i'd like to see some adjustment on there at the top but what they do well at was again that snap but the elastic or shock cord in here seems to be really really tight and really well designed. You can take these off. There's just this little clip here and you just kind of unravel it from the pack and then you put your shoulder strap back on. Moving over to the other side, I did say the shoulder strap pockets are removable and one of the cool features here is, you know, many people these days on their hiking trips are either vlogging or taking lots of pictures uh, with something more than their phone, right? They're using uh, a Peak Design capture clip. It's like 75 bucks. It's absolutely overpriced, but it works really well. I actually have a knockoff version I got for 30 bucks many, many moons ago. I think it's like 12 bucks now, but I'm pretty sure they weren't supposed to copy it because they don't sell it on Amazon anymore. Anyway, what you do is you just basically, you attach this to your pack, you hit this red button, and there's your camera right there. And then you can kind of clip it in securely and you hear that little lock. Now. On any other pack, 
Uh, hooking this thing up is nearly impossible, right? You have to go behind the shoulder strap and this mesh barely lets you do that. And even when you do, it's like, in my opinion, the most uncomfortable thing that rests against your chest. It's like so uncomfortable. I use it for like three hours and I ended up stopping and take it off. It was just terrible. With this pack, however, they have a big piece of webbing uh, that you can attach one of these Peak Design Clips or this knockoff one that I have to instead of going all the way behind the shoulder strap to, to accomplish that. And I think that is really cool. I'd actually like to see some more vendors actually incorporate that into their shoulder straps. And then the last feature I'd like to talk about is the hip belt. Now this came standard with the complete model. Uh, the base model doesn't have this, but you can purchase it separately. This is uh, really nice. I mean, they're just standard padded foam hip belts. They feel exactly like uh, the shoulder straps are very, very comfortable. However, what I'd like to see is two-way adjusters on the tension system. Not really a necessity, more of a, man, this would be cool if it had it kind of thing. Uh, might not even be needed for a frameless pack, but I know on my Z-Pax Arc Hall, I did really like that feature just because you can really just lock that down on your hips and just feels so comfortable. And as I said, if you don't want the hip belt, it is removable. These are like pretty much like standard clips. They just require a little bit of force and they come straight out. I've never had one of these accidentally open up while on the trail, no matter how hard I lock it down. This tension system really doesn't let that happen as you have to pull away and then pull out. So if you have any questions about the Ranger from the Evolved Supply Company, uh, you know, just ask below. I'll try to get back to you if I know the answer. Uh, remember, I'm going to take this out for the first time tomorrow just to kind of see how it works and feels. Put in some gear in this thing and take it on a day trip before I take it out on some other longer trips. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Frozen and I'll see you on the trail.